It's a beautiful day in Sandestin, and hello to you. I am a day late with my little usual video during the week, but I doubt that's caused you a lot of consternation. I appreciate any of you looking at this, and I've said this many times, if it's helpful to anybody, then that kind of makes me happy. This is sort of Reader's Digest of what we'll be doing this Sunday morning. We're going to look at Jesus' commandment that we love one another. Uh, last Sunday, we sort of went to the table together and talked about that aspect, how important it is for us to understand that being at the Lord's table is a communal event. It's something that's meant to be done with one another. Uh, someone posted this week a cute little thing on Facebook that says, y'all means everybody. And so y'all come to the table. When we say that on Sunday morning, it means everybody's invited through the grace of Jesus Christ. Anyone that wants to follow him and be loved by him is welcome. Well, the one another's in the Bible are pretty vast. There are 51 different verses that challenge disciples to do something for one another. Some of those things include praying, being kind, forgiving, being hospitable that we talked about a few weeks ago, being humble with one another, to serve one another, instruct one another, exhort one another, submit to one another. That's a goodie. Honor one another. On and on again, the Bible teaches the one another's. Richard Meyer wrote a little book many years ago, and it was handed to me by a friend about one anothering is what he calls it. The Christians call to one another. And that's really at the heart of the teaching of Jesus. The biggie with one another is to love one another. And that's where we'll land on Sunday morning. John uh, chapter 13, verses 34 and 35, or where he gives the new command. And we'll sort of talk about that together. What does that mean specifically that we are called into this life together with one another? Where does that come from? Why is that so important? And we know that it's important to God because we learn about him as we read the Bible and we learn that he loves to be in relationship with his creation. He desires it. He works for it. He forgives and wipes the slate clean so that we can be back in fellowship with one another. The Bible is full of stories of God's pure enjoyment of being in fellowship with one another. From the story of creation and that great story in Genesis 1, 26, 27 especially, where God makes it clear that we are his beloved creation and we are the apple of his eye. Uh, the, our call in Christianity is to be made in the image of God and to follow in the footsteps of Christ. And when you mingle that together, you come out with the command to love one another, not the option, not the favor that we might be doing someone or the good nature we might have to occasionally forgive a sin or include someone. It is, it is a command that we love one another. So Sunday, we'll think through that and we'll think through together uh, what that could mean for all of us in this world if we took that more seriously. I like name tag Sunday at the gathering. It, it helps me because I haven't learned everybody's name yet and we've talked about that. In COVID, we had masks several months we didn't meet, so I'm getting there. But also, I like what the name tag kind of says. It levels the field for everybody. When someone comes in to the gathering on name tag Sunday, everybody has a tag. From the folks who have been there the longest, from the preacher, the musician, from anybody at any place in the gathering, we all have that little tag slapped on that says, hello, my name is Ronnie. And it is a reminder that that really, really is what most people are looking for 
is to be in fellowship with one another, to be found, to be noticed, to be included and accepted and loved, to be a part of the y'all that Christianity is. Hope to see you Sunday and have a great rest of the week.